Hi guys, um, kind of nervous right now. I'm doing a video response to a, a Chris Crocker video that I just watched. And like, Chris Crocker is like a YouTube legend up there with like B. Scott and um, Alpha Cat and all of them. But um, what he, what he spoke on in this video that I just watched was about Christians telling him that he wasn't who God um, would like for him to be. Now, one, I want to say, none of us are who God wants us to be. None of us. You know, if the world was the way that God wanted it to be, then there would not have been a need for Jesus to die for his sins, for our sins. And I felt like I can relate to him because since I've had my little YouTube channel, I've had a lot of um, different races of people leave me comments on my channel and my inbox telling me that since I am black, you know, that I'm damned to go to hell and God is going to destroy my race and, you know, all of these, these other different things. People often use God as an excuse to hate other people when it says to love thy neighbor because thy neighbor's sin is on them and God. That has nothing to do with us at all. What, what you're doing in your life is not for me to, to judge or to condemn or to talk about or any of that. Because God forgives me. And if God can forgive me, who am I to look down on you? In God's eyes, all sins are equal. And there's a big argument on that. That, you know, um, homosexuality is an abomination. All of that. It's on God. And any given moment of the day, he can change every law, every rule, and things can be 100% different. So it really doesn't matter what is an abomination, what is a sin, what's not, who's better. And that's another thing people do. We put levels on things because we like to feel like, you know, I may be bad, but at least I'm not as bad as you. Which is a sin right there in itself. Uh, I remember reading something in the Bible. Jesus telling a story. He said two men walked into the temple. And you know. To pray to God for forgiveness. One was a tax collector. Now back in those days. Being a tax collector was damn near. The worst thing you can be. So the tax collector kneeled down um, <clears throat> below, kneeled down on the ground, had his face in the dirt, apologized to God, confessing all of his sins, saying all of the horrible things that he has done to people in order to collect that tax. Another man was also in there repenting. Excuse me. He didn't even kneel down. Yes, ma'am. May I use your comb to comb my daughter's hair? You can. I'll give you a comb, but don't use mine. Hold on a second. The other man didn't even kneel down. And he was like, well, yeah, I've sinned, but at least I'm not as bad as that tax collector over there. When they walked out of the <laughs> Don't laugh. <laughs> when, they walked, when they walked out of that, um, the temple, only one man was forgiven. And that was the tax collector. Because he humbled himself. He wasn't trying to make any excuses for his sins. He admitted his sins. He asked for God's forgiveness and he moved on. None of us are who God wants us to be. We will never be who God wants us to be because we're born into sin. That is something that we will not ever be able to overcome. And those who do try to overcome it, like these priests and these nuns that have these vows of celibacy, they end up being, being the worst of all. Because that manifests and it comes out in a much greater, more eviler <laughs> than way. Ah, you know what I'm saying? It comes off in a worse way than it would have if they just go ahead and admit to their sexual desires. Now, basically, the whole point of my video is, like I said, no one is who God wants us to be. But no one also has the right to point the finger to the next person and tell them that they're not good enough for God or what God wants them to do because no one knows what God wants the next person to do. That's between that person and God. Their relationship with God has nothing to do with you or your relationship with them. If you choose to discriminate against them, not to like them, and not to socialize against them, that's because you've decided that. Don't try to put the Bible in it because of what the Bible said. Because the Bible says, love thy neighbor. Who did Jesus socialize with? Who did Jesus eat with? Who was Jesus around? His whole you know, his whole little reign. 
the sinners. The worst of the worst. The worst of the worst. So who are you to use God as an excuse to discriminate against someone because of sexuality, race, gender? I don't know. Hopefully, you know, Chris Crocker, you watch this and you understand where I'm coming from. And um, don't even worry about it. You know, I believe the reason why you were so upset and you were crying is because you feel a calling from God. You feel that there's something that's not right. And he's speaking to you. Never mind what me or any other Christian or any other person is saying. You need to seek what he is saying. And when you're ready to follow it, you will. You know, when he's ready for you to change, he will change you. Until then... Enjoy being you. Enjoy the life that you have. And there's always going to be somebody hating on something regardless of who they proclaim to be, what rank they are in society, or any of that. And my marriage is about to fall and I'm like trying to hold it. <laughs> Later, guys. That was nice. It was nice. <laughs>